We are Sorted, a group of mates from London exploring the newest and best in the world of food whilst trying to have a few laughs along the way. <laughs> we've got chefs, we've got normals, and a whole world of stuff for you to explore, but everything we do starts with you. Ho, ho, hello, I'm Jamie, this is Mike, and this is Fridge Cam. And today, our chefs use their chefy knowledge to help us discern which ingredients are worth spending money on at Christmas. Now we've done similar before with kitchen utensils, where James and I as chefs kind of pick an expensive and a cheaper option, and then we have a conversation with two normals to see where they attribute the value to the products. And today we're doing the same thing, but with Christmas ingredients. Whoop whoop. <laughs> I think this is going to be a really interesting conversation. So, give us a spin. Oh, yeah, boy. Good. I do not like this. One's high end, one's not. By the looks of it, I think I can work it out. Oh, straight off the bat, which do you think is more expensive? As the non smoked salmon eater of the pair of us, I would say this one is more expensive. I too would agree. It has a, a shine to it, mm -hmm. also, it's got more depth in colour. I think, though, both have been cheapened by the addition of a parsley leaf, <laughs> so you can just get rid of them. If you'd both like to have a taste, sure, sure. maybe start with the one nearest Barry. Why are you using your fingers? Because then the, the, the fishiness is going to get on your fingers. With two hands, aren't I? OK, it's quite mild, quite a mild smoked salmon. It falls apart, it's not overly fishy. That's the sort of thing I can imagine putting on top of my scrambled egg. Jamie, what, what do you salmon? think of it? For me, what I don't like about smoked salmon is a bit of a mixture between the taste, the texture and the smell. <laughs> <laughs> right, already it's less flaky, it's holding together better. On that one, you're left with a touch of fishiness. With that, you're just left with pure smoky flavour. I'm not gagging at that one. That one is far less fishy. It has a firmer mm. texture to it, which is nicer. I could eat that. One of those is three times more expensive than the other. It's not the way you think. It's the other way round. What? <laughs> the oak smoked what? salmon, the smoky one that you are more a fan of with some of the darker meat, is the cheaper of the two. It's still a good quality what? salmon, but it is a third of the price. That one that is less greasy and more expensive is smoked for longer, better sourced than the other. If they're there in front of me, already been bought, I'd go for the cheaper one. But if I'm out buying it, I'd probably go for one that I know has been sourced properly. I was interested in your comment about the, the browner meat as well. That tends to go off quicker than the rest and will drag the rest of the salmon down with it. So generally is cut off to prevent that because smoking is a form of preservation. However, they often keep it on the cheaper cuts because you can sell it and it's sold by weight. So. That's another thing that sometimes you can look out for between the two. I like cheap smoked salmon <laughs> and not good smoked salmon. You should be far more offended by Who am I? <laughs> oh, there's a cloche this time. May we? You may. Yeah. Woohoo! Christmas cheer. Happy Christmas. <laughs> so it looks to me like we've got sea salt and table salt. Yep. Big flakes. Little, little flakes. flakes. They serve different purposes. James gets angry at me when I put sea salt in everything because <laughs> I think it's posher. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Merry Christmas. Why is he going to the fridge? <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Straight yeah. away, I go for sea salt. Definitely sea salt. Two different batches of roast potatoes. One has used sea salt throughout the entire cooking process. One has used table salt throughout the entire cooking process. Smart. Smart. You've just yeah. uncovered a beauty. <laughs> Look at that one. Cheers. Nice tats. Right. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> oh. Right, this is obviously the sea salt one because I can see the salt on it. Um, no, 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 it's S E A. <laughs> 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 they don't no. call it sea salt because it's bigger flakes yeah, than you can see. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah it, is, it is. It definitely is. It definitely is. <laughs> It's not too salty. No. The best thing about salt is it enhances the flavour of what is already there. So it turns a roast potato into a banging roast mm -hmm. potato. Well, let's see. Let's have another potato. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> While you're chewing on that, one of the things you've already mentioned about this is it's a valid point, is you can see the, the sea salt flakes and a visual 
appearance, whether it's for decoration on a plate or when you're plating something up, is an important factor of sea salt. In the table salt potatoes, they tasted salty, whereas in the sea salt potato, it tasted more of potato with a, a mange too of salt. So what you're saying is you get a, a better coverage with a fine granular table salt. Yeah, but because of that, it tasted saltier. And I don't want my food to taste saltier, I just want it to taste more of what it's supposed to taste of. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd, oh, I'd agree, that's a tastier potato. There is no point in using a sea salt if it's gonna go into something that will dissolve. So a pan of pasta water, a pan of water to parboil veg, stocks, sauces, mayonnaise, those kind of things use table salt. For texture, for appearance, and, and for flavour on some things like a tomato salad or a bit of roast beef that you've sliced that you want to, or a steak that you want to finish with sea salt. So you both preferred the sea salt version. Those two you got there, the sea salt is 13 times more expensive. So only if you want to see the salt, use sea salt. Throwing a generous pinch of sea salt into a pan to boil pasta in is insane. Okay, lesson learned. Sorry. One of my favourite courses. Give us a spin. Oh, baby! Oh, what? Yes! Two cheese boards in front of you. Where do you spend your money at Christmas? This is going to be tough. The drinks are identical and they're just two nice conversation points that you can enjoy alongside. Looks really fizzy, but there's, there's hardly any fizz to that. It's honey, it's got honey. It's a sparkling mead. They used to make mead when, uh, when you were a child, didn't they? It's quite popular. What the hell is mead? A fermented honey-based drink. Friar Tuck used to drink it. That was Ben's mate when he was at school. <laughs> <laughs> that went down smooth, Baz. You having trouble at home? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to become a running joke. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. Apple? Ice cider. Ice cider is made by freezing freshly pressed apple juice. The white ice is then removed leaving the remaining juice, which is naturally stronger and more intense, and it's that that they then create the cider from. So it's in a more intense apple flavour. There isn't the same cheese on both. They are similar. We have, as, as close as possible, found similar cheddars, goat's cheese, there's a blue cheese on each. We've tried to keep it as similar as possible. What is your behaviour? My, my, my behaviour. It's the etiquette of how to cut a brie. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Delicious. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh. Mm. Is that a good blue? That is great. <laughs> Cheese. Now from this board. Oh, oh God, it's Cheese. worse. Oh, that is so good. Oh. That is far, far more hard hitting. Barry, yes. you should down your drink. <laughs> I think a lot of people have asked us, how do you go about designing a cheese board? And I think it is always super subjective, but when we kind of put together a cheese board, four or five different cheeses, try and get a different mixture of hard, semi-soft, and one that almost runs off the board, and then decorate it with fruits, dried fruits, fresh fruits, celery, biscuits, chutneys. Let's can we go safe now, some cheds. Back up. Oh, what a soft cheddar. Rich. Mature. Cream, creamy. Creamy. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm, mm, okay. Creamier. Drier. Words. <laughs> Cheers. I need another drink. That was delicious. Crack me. Look cute. That's naughty. Mmm. Even more fruity. Mmm. Goat cheese. We've got to do the goat cheese. 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 <laughs> oh, wow. In terms of what's on the, each board, I reckon that one is more expensive. But you seem fairly indecisive. It's got bigger flavours, but I also realise that bigger flavours doesn't necessarily translate to quality, it just means punchier. I'd agree, but it's also the most challenging. So the board with the more challenging cheeses, they are all British cheeses, and that comes as a pre-selection, plus we added chutney and crackers from the same store, and that was £71 all in. Whoa! The other board, a mixture of British and Spanish and Italian different cheeses. We bought the crackers and the chutney from the same supermarket, hand selected, and that was £27 and a number of pennies. So nearly two and a half times cheaper. I got as much enjoyment out of the cheaper board as I did 
an expensive board, mm -hmm. but that chutney jumped out of something special. I think if you're going to spend a chunk of money on cheese, don't then pair it with the most basic crackers and forget about the things that turn it into an experience, the chutneys, the fruits, the nuts. Now these two items have taken slightly longer to prepare and in that time James and Jamie have decided they have better places to be, Christmas shopping or something. So we've subbed in normal for normal. Boys, give us a spin. Oh, oh, oh sorry, oh. I'm new here. I thought I could smell these. So in front of you, you've got two different turkeys. Is there a specific breed that's best for Christmas or Thanksgiving? The clue is in the colour of these. We're using the bronze turkeys. Okay. Don't all turkeys go bronze once they cook? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one here looks slightly bigger. One of these is a couple of kilos bigger than the other, so don't let size influence. So both of these birds came with giblets inside of them. One was frozen. One arrived fresh. I tried to keep the pair of them as similar as possible, butter, salt, pepper, on a trivet of vegetables, onions and orange. Right, so instantly, and I don't know whether this is to do with the preparation or whatever, this one looks shinier and has more juice on it. This, this one looks like it's out of a TV advert. It could be plastic, it's too perfect in, the way, in its, in its turkey-like form. Yeah, so do you think that's because it's been frozen and it's do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. not, it was, wasn't was reared organically, like running around, like just getting fat and happy. <laughs> it, it's been like properly it's, yeah, frozen. It's been engineered and, almost. And like engineered. That. Do you think that's. Maybe. Shall I carve some for you, yeah, pair of you, and then yeah. we can try them? Keyword, shall I carve them yeah, for you? Obviously, I like doesn't that. trust us. Thanks, Ebbers. Beautiful. I haven't smothered it in gravy or cranberry sauce or bread sauce. Or I want you just to. Sample the flesh. Oh, what did he say? What did he say? Sample the flesh. Oh, I think I just naturally blocked these out now. <laughs> so we got brown meat, we got white meat, thanks to Chef Evers. A lot juicier. It's fattier, isn't it? Mm. It's got lots of fat on it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I've got a really juicy bit there. Dark meat, more fibrous. Like you can actually individually taste and feel the texture. The breast meat, I think packs more flavour from that one. Do you reckon? What's really hard is on Christmas Day, you don't eat it like this. You have it smothered in everything. I feel like the texture of this one is better and the flavour of the dark meat is better for me. I feel like this one's juicier and fattier. I'm guessing the price really comes down to how it was reared. I think, yeah, I think absolutely the welfare and the husbandry and, and all of that and the, the origins of the turkey in this instance is probably where a huge, well, almost certainly where a huge percentage of the, the cost is going to lie. Because I think the breast meat there, I, I couldn't really tell a huge amount of difference. The dark meat on the one closest to Barry, I think it's absolutely sublime compared to the other one. I'm completely thrown. I'm going to stick to my guns and say that's the more expensive one. Mike? I'm going to have to go with this one being the expensive one just because of the difference of the, of the dark meat. So the one closest to Mike, the bigger bird, it is a couple of kilos more, and it did take, for that reason, half an hour more cooking. That was the frozen one. 22 pounds for the entire bird. For the whole thing? For the whole thing, making it four pounds 14 per kilo. Okay, now I'm interested. The turkey on Barry's side is a little bit less in size, but we're looking at this per kilo anyway. The entire bird was fresh and delivered to our door, 102 pounds. <laughs> 20 pounds 50 per kilo, but about five times more expensive. And how many do they serve? Like, what's the portion? They say about a pound, so about 450 grams per person. Okay. That's a lot, but bearing in mind you're buying the bones, and bearing in mind everyone also wants leftovers. That's not, you're not going to consume all that, but they say roughly a pound per person. That does not taste five times better mm. than that. It's slightly more fibrous, it's slightly more texture mm. to the dark meat, it's because it's moving around a lot more. It has all that chance to free roam and free range, and therefore it's using the muscles more, so it has been more worked than perhaps plumped up a little bit quicker perhaps in another environment, which is why it's slightly fattier. Price doesn't really bother me when it comes to the welfare of an animal, like pay up and beyond mm. to make sure you get great meat. But that's going to serve eight people, right? That's going to do ten. Well then a ten pounds a head, 100%, I'll buy that. Actually, thinking about it like that. Ten, ten pounds a head? Ten pounds a head, but... For turkey. As opposed to two pounds a head. Notoriously, the rest of the 
plate is going to be populated with cheaper ingredients? For me, I think it's all about the 80-20 split. So turkey, once it's cooked and roasted, will only make up about 20% of the plate, but spend maybe 80% of your budget on it. It's once a year, it's celebratory, make sure it's well sourced. All the other stuff is root veg and it's super cheap and you can cook a whole bunch of clever things with it and make them stand out, but celebrate that 20% of the plate with most of the budget. And beyond that, top tip from a chef, don't always read the cooking instructions on the back of the packaging because they tend to err on the side of caution. Both of those turkeys were cooked for an entire hour less than was suggested on the packaging. Get yourself a temperature probe, make sure you're getting in at the deepest, thickest part of both the dark and the breast meat and make sure it's above the temperature that you're comfortable with, 63 degrees and about 65 degrees. A chef is for life, not just for Christmas. Oh boy, I feel loved. <laughs> I'll see you in Jan. <laughs> So, how did you find that? Which ingredients should we compare next? Comment down below and let us know. Olive oil seems like a good one. Olive oil does seem like a good one. Beer. Wine. Wine would be a good one. No. Wine would be a really good no, one. No, it wouldn't. Yes, it would. And as always, if you like seeing us make this style of video, give us a like because then we know to make more. And when will we make more? Every Wednesday, every Sunday at 4pm. We'll see you then. We Goodbye. Mix it up a little bit. As we mentioned, we don't just make top quality YouTube videos. No. We've built the Sorted Club, where we use the best things we've learned to create stuff that's hopefully interesting and useful to other food lovers. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in a few days. Are you enjoying this? Just two best friends chomping on roast potatoes. My favourite video of all time.